Hey Stu from UAV Futures here and today, well, my phone's going off. What's going on, Cal? G'day Stu from UAV Futures here and today, well, hopefully I'm going to answer a lot of questions out there. Recently we did our, I guess, 2019 UAV Futures race build. You can see a video that should be popping up here. Thanks very much YouTube. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how you set it up in beta flight, how you make your model on your radio, how you connect your receiver and essentially how you get your radio to talk to your drone and your receiver and all that sort of stuff so you guys can go out there, start flying and have some fun because without doubt this is one of the, mo the most confusing topics in the hobby you know, with beta flight receivers, UARTs, serial RXs, what type of inputs, all that sort of stuff. So we're gonna be going through, breaking it down, making it really easy for you guys so you can watch this video and have the confidence to get out there, get flying and have an awesome time because FPV, it is absolutely amazing. Now the builds we're working on, they're the, you know, like I mentioned, the power build, the ultralight build, but it's gonna be relatively the same concept no matter what drone you're actually building. But first things first, we take the props off because safety first, always take your props off when you're doing something when it comes binding to your receiver or you know any any part pretty much when you got your quad plugged in and you're plugging it in on the bench it is always safe to take your props off so let's do that first and then we'll cut back to what it's like without our props Alrighty, so I've taken my props off. We're also gonna take off the top plate as well. So I'm just gonna quickly take off the top plate. We're gonna be working on the uh, power performance build first, and then we'll jump over. Look at the, I guess, ultralight build because they are a little bit different. So we're gonna take the top plate off. Alrighty, so this one is going to be super easy. So you can see just here on the side, and hopefully my big head's not getting in the way, we've got five volt, ground and S bus. And the reason we're using S bus is because that's what we're gonna be using. The radio we're using today is the X light. I'm gonna link this down below. This is my radio of choice. It's relatively kind of cheap. It is super easy. I've played a lot of Xbox and video games in the past. So kind of, I like to thumb my radio and it just fits well. It's easy to transport around and Free Sky has a very, very strong radio link. So we're gonna be setting up using the X light, but it could also be the same. There's a cheaper version of like the QX7, but any pretty much any Tyrannus system out there it's gonna be using x -Lite. So thank you very much, FreeSky. So what we need to do, first things first, we're also, we're gonna be connecting up to these little pads here. And here, this is the receiver we're gonna be using. This, this is the XM Plus. So we're gonna be soldering up directly to this bad boy. So I'm gonna put that there, a little bit of blue tack. I'm gonna get myself, I've got some wires right here, which I'm gonna be cutting. Doesn't matter what color you use, but I'm gonna use red, black, and white because that's gonna make it easier for you guys at home to understand what's going on. All right, so first things first, we need to, and these might come with cables already soldered onto them, but if they don't, well, it's very, very easy, don't worry. So I'm just gonna strip the ends, put a little bit of solder on. I've got my TS100, which is an amazing soldering iron, a little soldering guide should pop up there. And if you've been building these along at home with the build video, you'll notice just how easy. You should be an absolute master when it comes to soldering out. But we're simply gonna wait for this thing to heat up. It heats up pretty quickly, and then we're gonna get to solder. Alrighty, so that's looking good, about 400 degrees. Nice clean tip on the end. One, two, three. And we're gonna solder that up to here. So now we've done that, it's time to solder up to our XM Plus and I'm just gonna dab on some little fresh bits of solder on here. Just makes it nice and easy for our join. So we've got our signal first. One. Voltage in the middle. And then our ground on the outside. Now you may wish to hit that with a little bit of hot glue as well, so just run some hot glue over the top. But other than that, that is pretty much ready to solder up directly now to our Titan stack in here. So let's get ahead with that. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other end, we're simply going to cut the wire, strip the ends, hit them with a little bit of tinning, and 
and then we solder up. Now this one's very easy to label. I'm gonna put a picture on the screen for the Titan stack, but essentially we're gonna be soldering up. This one actually has a port that says S bus, so you know exactly where to hook it up, but sometimes they don't, so it might be like a UART. So any open UART in there, uh, that's what you're gonna be soldering to. A common one is UART three, but check the manual because look, depending on which receiver you're using, that's what sort of determines what UART you're gonna be soldering up to. This one is very, very easy on the uh, Titan stack, so. I'm just going to solder this in. I'm not too sure. They're kind of under this board. It makes it a little bit tricky to see, but there's the 5 volt. There's the ground, and here's the S bus. Believe it or not, that's all there really is to putting a receiver in or soldering it in. That's the actual physical things you need to do. So that one's ready to rock and roll. In a minute, we'll be jumping over, looking at the computer and, you know, looking at our radio, all that sort of stuff. I'm going to go ahead and do the same right here. This is on the ultralight build. But uh, this one actually comes... That's going to annoy me. This one actually comes with a little plug that plugs in the back. Now, sometimes your receivers can come with pins. I don't really like that. I prefer just a direct solder. So same sort of thing. This one is, it has a little plug that it goes to on the flight controller side of things, but we're still gonna solder up just here. I'm gonna strip the ends of the wires. Hit them with a little bit of solder. Got another XM Plus receiver right here. All very, very easy stuff. So, and just add on a little bit of fresh solder on the board. One, two, three. And we get to work soldering it up. So we've got our out of the way. We've got our signal voltage. and our ground. So that's it in terms of soldering up to both of these. Very, very simple stuff. I can take my soldering iron out now. I don't need this anymore. I'm gonna put that to the side, somewhere safe. And now what we need to do, we're gonna jump over and we're gonna make a model on our radio. So hopefully this is gonna be zoomed in enough. So I'm gonna turn my radio on, make a new model, and I'm gonna give you guys a little tip as well. You don't need to make a whole bunch of different models. I'm gonna show you how, if you've got multiple drones, you can just use one model on your radio to control them all. So we're going in here. So I've had to turn the lights on. Hopefully you guys can see this anyway. What we're gonna do, we're gonna go in, make a new model, and let's start here, create model. And I've had to zoom right in on this little screen. Go across, here's where you can put a name in here. So we're just gonna call this, let's call this model B for binding. There you go. Then I'm gonna go all the way down. And you can see we've got D16. Now that's because we're gonna be binding up to our SBUS receivers. Channel range one to 16, that's fine to leave. You can see here RX number. Now if you put that at zero, zero, you can bind all your models to zero, zero. It will remember what they are. So we're just gonna leave it on nine for now. But if you wanna fly multiple models off the, multiple drones off the same model, you can set it to zero, zero, bind everything up to it. And that's, you know, I guess that's the way I usually do it because I've got so many drones. We're gonna go across, we're gonna click bind. It's gonna start beeping. I'm gonna to click telemetry on. And we're gonna be plugging in our little RX receiver. Now the important part here, we need to hold this button down. There's a little bind button on the top, right here in the top left-hand corner. We're gonna hold that down while we plug in our drone. You can see the red light's flashing and we've got a solid green light. Now what we're going to do, we're going to exit on our radio, so stop our binding. Then we can plug and re-plug. Alrighty, so you can see that light is solid green right there. Now what we need to do, there's two extra things we need to do on our radio. We're going to set up some auxiliary switches because you could go fly this, but there are some little extras that we want to do. I'm just going to unplug the drone for a second. Back to our radio, hopefully you guys can see this, and we're going to go all the way up because we still need something. We still need to set up our arm switch and also our, here we go, also our other mode switches and stuff like that. So we're gonna go across, and you're gonna go across the mixer. Now at the moment, we've only got four channels, so we need to add a fifth one. Oh, go back here. And it doesn't matter, you don't need to give it a name. I'm just gonna make it this switch, because that's what I like. That's gonna be 
my arm switch, go back, this one right here, I'm going to need to edit that. Alright, so we've got SA, and then channel 7, if you wanted channel 7, I'm going to flick this one. And that's it. So now we've got a couple of auxiliary switches, so we're going to have this channel 5 is going to be aux 1, channel 6 is going to be aux 2, and channel 7 is going to be aux 3. Now this will be perfect when we go over to beta flight, we can set this up and we shouldn't have any problem whatsoever getting our model ready to go out and have a fly. So I'm going to do the same thing, I'm also going to bind up the light version and then it's going to be the exact same process, I'll save you guys some time. Then we're going to let's jump over to the computer and show you how we set it up there. So let's do that, see the computer in 3, 2, 1. Alrighty, so I've opened up beta flight, I'm going to hit connect and depend, look this might be different for some of you guys or well, might just calibrate my gyro just there give me one second and then we can continue on so we're going to click over on ports now because we're using s bus i'm going to mine's connected up to uart1 but yours might be different maybe you're going to be on uart3 maybe you're going to be uart6 you can try definitely there's no harm in trying a couple of these if you can't get it to work i know mine in this build is set on uart1 so i'm going to click save and reboot and then we're going to connect again I'm going to go to my configuration page, I'm going to go down here, and you're going to see this part, this part where it says receiver, this is something we need to change. We're, going to, we're using a serial based receiver, so you can see we've got SBUS right here in the name, and then you make sure you choose SBUS, this might be on Spectrum or something, make sure you click SBUS as well, and then I'm going to click save and reboot there and connect again and then one thing i'm going to turn make sure my radio is turned on go over to our receiver tab and i'm going to plug in a battery into my drone so you should be able to hear me do that Alrighty, and you can notice my drone is going absolutely crazy and that's because our channel mapping on the way my radio is set up is a little bit different if i move the sticks it's not really doing what i want it to do just go down here and i know usually you'd think it would be free sky that's not how it actually works i don't know why it's set up like that i think it's dumb i have to select spectrum i'm going to click save and then look at that i move the sticks there's my throttle there's my yaw, my pitch, and my roll. They're all set up. And the switches that I set up before are enabled as well. So you can see, as I flick auxiliary one, the auxiliary one goes up. As I flick auxiliary two, and three, and so on. Now this is where we're gonna jump over. I'm gonna click save here. We're gonna jump over, look at our modes. This is how I like to set mine up. So my arm is on from about here for mode one. For auxiliary one if you want to set up an angle mode or self-leveling mode you could do that using these i don't do that then i'm going to go down i don't even have a beeper i need to i'm going to make sure i've got air mode on as well that's on auxiliary one for me and then really the only other part i like to add we're going to have maybe flip over after crash on auxiliary three so a bit of turtle mode there as well but that is pretty much it as far as uh setting up your receiver in beta flight so i'm going to click save then I can disconnect and we're ready to rock and roll. Alrighty, back on the bench, we've bound up our receiver, it's working to our radio. Now what we need to do, we're gonna neatly put it in our build, mount our antenna. So I'm gonna simply slide a little bit of heat shrink over the top. And then I'll link this down below as well. I'm gonna and then I'm gonna heat this up, put a bit of double sided tape under it. So let's cut to that with some editing in three, two, one, boop, radio. So that's looking good. Put a bit of double sided tape underneath. You can see I've got uh, just my industrial size roll right here. Let's put a little bit under here. Now, because on this build I actually had enough room to sort of install it underneath the VTX there. I'm gonna have it so my bind button is just hanging out the back just a little bit. I can put on my VTX. Uh, screw it back down like it was before we added in our receiver our camera back in the front that actually fits perfectly that's beautiful put our camera back in the front so that actually fits beautifully I don't know if you can see that or it's coming up but yeah that receiver fits perfectly in the back there we've still got access to our bind pin and then even though it's already bound let's put our camera in the front Alrighty, so that is looking absolutely beautiful. You can see we've got our antennas coming out the back like this, but if we left it like that, they're gonna get cut by the props as they're spinning around. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna, with the magic help of zip ties, we're gonna zip tie some of these things up. And I've got another one here. Where's a small one? 
and we're going to use these zip ties for some little, I guess, supports, and then we're going to heat shrink them down. So one of these is going to go up here like so. And that's where that one's going. And I'm going to run the other one down out under the arm and have that coming out the back as well. So I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so now what I need to do, I've got my zip ties on there. I'm going to go put a bit of heat shrink on them. Then I'm going to cut back because I don't have the uh, the little heat gun to do that in front of the camera here. So I'm going to go get the heat gun and then I'll show you what it looks like. And that's it for our receiver installed. Alrighty, with heat shrink on, you can see we've got our two antennas pretty much facing perpendicular to each other. So we should be getting some nice long range action. We shouldn't be getting any dropouts or anything like that. And overall, it's a pretty easy process. Once you hook it up to the right UART, make sure you've got the right serial provider, all that sort of stuff set up. It's, you know, relatively straightforward, but it can be a little bit confusing. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Definitely subscribe for more FPV related content. The little playlist should be linked up there if you want to find out how we built this or how we built the Ultralight as one as well for a 2019 racing version. Go check that out. We've also got like a beta flight guide setting up... Um, <laughs> reversing your props, flashing your firmware, some other little day I get some other little guides as well that go together to work with that. So other than that, definitely subscribe for more FPV related content. I'll link everything down below, the X lights, the XMs, these frames, all that sort of stuff. And as always, happy binding, building and happy flying.